Why the big hurry? If Dr. Carroll is not extracted tonight, Data Dime will put him through mind conditioning. And we will our best chance of finding out what Data Dime are up to. Are they all expendable? Don't joke. You have to be careful, Joanna. Code keys will only operate while the owner is alive. If you kill them, the key is useless. Our guards are a different matter, of course. What's the target location? Work your way down the building to the ground level. Dr. Cowell will be in a research lab somewhere in the underground facility. How will I recognize him? We don't have an image record, and we can't find any official files. All we have is the name. Good luck, Dr. Dark. Right. Wrong controller. Pick the wrong one. I have two PS4 controllers. So this game is a Nintendo 64 game called the Perfect Dark, and uh, it was released in 2000 for the Nintendo 64. Of course you can play it on the computer using an emulator for the Nintendo 64, but that means you would have like a 4.3 resolution unless the emulator can make it 1920 1080p, which is probably is possible, but uh, the resolution would still be uh, like the original resolution, but uh, if you play on an emulator you can improve it thanks to the graphics card of your computer. Uh, but I'm not using the, uh, an emulator, I'm using a, a port of the game to the computer. So fans of this game have managed to... Fans of this game have managed to <coughs> enable... Uh, they have uh, found out the source code of the game and then uh, they have managed to port it to the computer uh, by uh, recreating the game uh, as a computer game, so it's not the same engine anymore, uh, but has the same source code, so it works exactly the same. But the benefits are that you can play in 1920 1080p resolution, you have uh, essentially better graphics, and uh, you have enhanced gameplay. Alright, so this game was developed by the same developers that developed uh, James Bond 007 GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64, a game from 1995 that I owned uh, at least uh, from uh, 2001 and onwards until uh, I sold uh, my Nintendo 64 to my sister. But anyway, she still has the game. And uh, this game was developed by the same developers and uh, plays exactly the same. Uh, but it's standalone, it's not a James Bond game. You are playing as a female agent and you do missions just like in James Bond. I believe that the developers or the company Rare, they um, uh, lost out on James Bond, the license to let James Bond. Uh, another company uh, overbid them and got the license, so they couldn't do a GoldenEye 2 or a James Bond 2. Instead, uh, another company made the second James Bond game on the Nintendo 64, which I never liked. It didn't play the same as, as the first one. I preferred uh, the original GoldenEye game, uh, which I never played the single player story to the end. I played maybe one or two or three missions, but I did play a lot uh, of multiplayer in that game with my sister and with friends. Uh, four player multiplayer, we used to rig uh, stages with mines and detonate them when, when the others uh, passed by, it was really fun. Uh, and uh, you could play with different weapons, uh, the mines were the most fun, but you also had a golden gun where you could kill an anyone in one shot and, and you had other uh, uh, options too. And this game plays exactly the same, has the same controls. I'm using a PS4 controller instead of a Nintendo 64 controller because when you connect it to the computer it will automatically be connected to the game and you can also play with the mouse and keyboard uh, when you use this PC port and uh, unlike with an emulator you don't have to go through the trouble of uh, enabling a controller for the emulator and such it could be annoying uh, alright but uh, this game it's essentially a James Bond 007 Goldeneye 
to but uh, it's a standalone brand named Dark uh, Perfect Dark and uh, you play as a female antagonist and you can have a female AI controlled ally uh, you can play multiplayer just like in James Bond and there is a sheet to allow you to use the James Bond weapons in this game most of them at least and uh, you can uh, have access to many more weapons that appear in the Bond game so it's, it's like uh, an improved James Bond game in terms of weapons you have the same weapon plus uh, many more and uh, the characters of the game are completely unique they are not Bond characters anymore the areas are not Bond areas anymore but the weapons from the Bond game can be unlocked through a sheet and uh, you have single player missions just like in GoldenEye and you have multiplayer just like in GoldenEye with many more options and uh, you can also play single player with the AI uh, ally which I will do here alright, cooperative and uh, we will play on easy difficulty we, we want a friendly fire on because the allied uh, uh, computer player is not actually uh, that good she can uh, go down on her knees, she can fight the melee she can do everything the player can and the AI can so, so she is uh, pretty decent in that sense but she doesn't have a lot of health and when she dies she is dead forever so if we don't want friendly fire I try that uh, without recording and I managed to help killing her faster because I uh, hit her instead of the enemy sometimes so without friendly fire she will only be killed by the enemy which is better we will start the game gain entrance to the laboratory yes I used to play this game by the way for uh, an hour or so I killed all the enemies essentially I reached the doctor but I did a mistake and uh, two That's mistakes actually Dr. Carlo is not extracted tonight. Datadyne will put him through mind conditioning. And we'll lose our best chance of finding out what Datadyne are up to. Are they all expendable? Don't joke. You have to be careful, Joanna. Code keys will only operate while the owner is alive. If you kill them, the key is useless. Our guards are a different matter, of course. What's the target location? Work your way down the building to the ground level. Dr. Cowell will be in a research lab somewhere in the underground facility. How will I recognize him? We don't have an image record, and we can't find any official files. All right. All we have is the name. The Good luck. Dr. Jump Cowell. out of that copter. So, uh, what I was saying is that uh, you can have an uh, AI ally, uh, but he's easy to kill, so we don't want the friendly fire. Uh, so this game has the same controls as James Bond. I never uh, were much for uh, shooters. Uh, my first ever shooter was a Super Nintendo title, Doom. Uh, that is more known as a computer game. It was first released on the computer in 1993. And then on the Super Nintendo in 1996. I played it probably in 1998 or so. Borrowed the game from my older cousin. He was uh, 10 years older than me. And uh, yeah, there are blood in this game, and the uh, controls are the same as in the games Bond GoldenEye. Uh, but anyway, Doom 1 uh, was a computer game first, released in 1993, but uh, the Super Nintendo game was released in 1996, and I borrowed it. We had a Super Nintendo from 1998 and onwards, I believe. Uh, our parents bought one for the entire family, or for my, me and my sister, essentially my twin sister. And uh, we had games like uh, Donkey Kong Country and Starving, but we, we didn't have uh, any shooters. Uh, but uh, an older cousin that was 10 years old that had uh, Doom 1, so I borrowed it from him and was obsessed with that game for a while. Because it was my first shooter, it had badass music and was fun, but it only had single player. Uh, so the first shooter with multiplayer that I played essentially James Bond Gold and I 007 for the Nintendo 64 which is the predecessor of this game Perfect Door made by the same developer Rare with the same graphics, same controls everything is similar you even have the toilet stage 
but remade to not be the spawn stage. It's the same stage, just with different graphics, different, different textures. Okay, and this game <coughs> is essentially James Bond 2 without being James Bond 2. You are, you are a female agent, uh, and uh, then you have a female who bre uh, like ally. Uh, her health is uh, very high, so when she dies, she is dead forever, but she is quite competent. You can play it with a friend too, which I have never tried. I never owned this game as a kid because uh, I had games phone, but I never saw the reason of buying this game. I thought it was a copy of games phone. I played it once at a friend's house, a female friend's house. She had the game. Instead of having games phone, she had this one because you are a female protagonist. <coughs> you do single player missions, uh, just like in Bond, uh, and you can play multiplayer like in Bond, and there are more modes, more weapons, everything, better gameplay, and the PC port here has, has been improved. Not only are the graphics prettier, especially from afar, when you look close to the model you see that they do not move their uh, mouth or blink their eyes, it's just a texture of a real uh, person strapped upon a model. So the models are uh, essentially the same style as Sims 1, look about the same, <coughs> and uh, yeah, the game is an improved uh, James Bond game essentially, uh, but without James Bond characters and uh, stuff, <coughs> the, the weapons are more advanced, and uh, can do more stuff, <coughs> and uh, you can play it in cooperative in single player with a friend uh, as well. I played it against a female friend as a kid. The game was released in 2000 for the Nintendo 64. She had the game. I thought it was a copy of Game Spawn, but uh, in reality it was uh, a follow up title that was standalone and didn't have the same brand. Alright, and uh, this game is actually the better game. So if you have played Game Spawn for the Nintendo 64 and liked it, I highly recommend this game because it's the same but improved. It's not James Bond anymore. <coughs> By the way, there is uh, the fans that are porting, uh, that did port this game to the PC, they are porting the James Bond game to the same engine as this game for the PC, so you will be able to play James Bond Goldeneye on the PC uh, with all the features of the Perfect Dark, which is like. Uh, Playing Pokemon Stadium 1 in, uh, Pokemon St uh, in Pokemon Stadium 2 essentially. Because this was like uh, their second shooter uh, with that, but had a different brand and name. So people didn't probably know they were connected unless they read magazines. Okay. <coughs> so I played Doom 1 and then I played James Bond. I only played this very little at a friend's house, uh, but I would have certainly enjoyed this game. One thing I loved about the James Bond and this game uh, that I didn't like is Counter-Strike, a game that I was forced to play with friends in, in high school back in like 2005-2004. If we used to go to a place um, called uh, Spixel where we played LAN games, where everyone sat at a computer, we hired a place for a night or so, and then everyone played uh, Counter-Strike and other games in multiplayer together, and uh, they liked uh, Counter-Strike, so I played quite a bit of Counter-Strike, because my friends played it, I used to be a sniper and just kill uh, from afar, because one thing I didn't like about uh, Counter-Strike was that uh, when you got hit by a bullet in the head, you died immediately, and when you got hit uh, in, in the stomach, you could only take like two or three hits. It was very realistic, and I wasn't very good at the game, so I died all the time. That's why I usually mm, played as a sniper and tried to hide uh, from others and just kill them from afar. But in this game, uh, it's much more, and in game spawned, it's much more easy to stay alive because you have a health bar. So even if they shoot you in the head or shoot you in the stomach, you will be able to take quite a few shots before you die. So it's uh, not as difficult as a realistic shooter. All the modern ones are more realistic. Uh, so yeah, I prefer this game and, and the GoldenEye a lot over the modern titles because of the health bar. 
was way better at this game, I mean the James Bond game, and this is actually the same, but improved. Uh, as for other shooters, I did play Tour of Two on the Nintendo 64, but I never really played the story, I played a little bit of it, but you needed an expansion pack, uh, which was like a tool you added to the controller that allowed you to save the game. If you didn't have an expansion pack or whatever it was named, you couldn't save the game, so obviously I uh, didn't play through two story-wise more than uh, whatever I could do in one play uh, because I couldn't save the game, but we played a lot uh, in multiplayer with my sister and friends and that was fun to be a raptor and run around and attack and you could also shoot at uh, aliens and, and humans, but anyway Besides those games, I have hardly uh, enjoyed any shooters. There was one game on the PlayStation 2 that I really enjoyed, named uh, Time Splitters 2. And it's also made by the same developer that made Games Bond Goldeneye and Perfect Dark. So, I really enjoyed their shooters. And uh, Time Splitters 2 is probably the last shooter that I really enjoyed playing. And the last one I played on a console. Of course, I... Uh, I did... Uh, play some uh, because the others play them like Halo 2, nah Halo 1 actually, Halo, Counter Strike and some others I played because my friends play them, but I uh, didn't really enjoy them too much. Uh, Halo was fun with a friend, however Counter Strike, uh, I thought it was boring to do the same thing over and over, I probably just played it because others did. Alright, so I did a mistake when I played this earlier, I got to the location of the doctor, and then I believe that she uh, alerted everyone by going to a computer, and uh, I got the mission failed, I needed to abort it, I had recorded and spoken the entire play through but the problem was that they can fight in me too but the problem was that uh, uh, I uh, failed the recording too did two mistakes one was to let that doctor live a female doctor uh, she decided to alert the alarm and all of a sudden I needed to abort the mission and to uh, that uh, the recording wasn't recording for some reason. Hopefully that is not the case now. Oh, you do not have friendly fire, so that's good. I don't like when I kill my own ally. That's fine to have friendly fire when we play with a friend, but it's not really fun uh, when it's an AI ally. They won't respawn. I believe a uh, player might respawn. I don't know about this game if they respawn or if you get game over when both die. die. So for example, if you play with a friend and uh, your friend is killed, then maybe uh, you can continue to play until you die. And if you die, it will be game over. Or it's like in a modern title where they just respawn when they die. But I think in this game we might get uh, game over when uh, they die. They might not be allowed to actually die in the game. And also the target. The gun uh, like, uh, finds itself in the enemy, and that wasn't the case in the game spawn game. It's easier to hit the enemies here because uh, it locks on the enemy. I like that a lot. But in, in this game on the Nintendo 64, uh, that might not be the case. I don't know. I haven't played it enough. You can try the emulator later just to see the difference. I think maybe this is improved, it's easier to hit the enemy here. Check if you have missed anything. Any area. I 
don't want to be sad about. I said that there are blood in this game. I don't know if there is blood in James Bond. Usually all titles like Road to the War from 2004 see, didn't have blood. But uh, this title from 2000 do have blood, which is impressive for the time. It was made. Yeah, these models look good from afar. And then when you get close, you see that it's just the texture. They look very realistic from afar. Uh, when you play on a Nintendo 64, I believe that the, the graphics are much more blurry. Same on an emulator, but the emulator still has better resolution than on the 64. But worse than this, I believe. Right, I played, I played Time Splitters 2 on the PlayStation 2 made by the same developer, it's also very good. But uh, after that, I never really liked that shooter. Halo was fun because you could play in cool. But I didn't play much of it. I liked that you could uh, drive uh, jeeps and such in that game and have your friend in one of the wagons. Such. So it was very good for cooperative play. And here you could have that girl controlled by a friend. It would be fun too. allowed to kill her. Mission failed, but the last time I let her live and then she went to this computer and alerted everyone. So we lost anyway. I don't know what we're supposed to do. Me. That's weird. Uh, failed. Gain entrance to the laboratory. I don't know how to win this because I killed her immediately now and then we lost that map because she was a critical person, not allowed to be killed. We weren't allowed to kill her. But uh, when I let her live the last time when I played, then she went to this computer and alerted an alarm. And then I also got the message that the mission failed. So I don't know how to prevent the mission from failing. If you let her live, she will alert everyone you fail and if you don't let her live because I thought now that if I kill her before she alerts everyone we would succeed but then I'll go stand away because she's not allowed to be killed. Very weird. Yeah, so this game could be controlled on the computer with a mouse and keyboard or with a PlayStation 4 controller like I'm playing. I uh, load a gun on uh, square, I uh, change weapon on uh, circle or Triangle. We have a pistol. We have uh, like a machine gun or whatever. Um, yeah, and uh, we can open doors and X. We shoot on R2. We have already failed. We need to abort the mission, but we have uh, we still have enemies to kill. There are more enemies, I believe. I don't know what we're supposed to do if we can't kill her. Or get an entrance to the laboratory. Very weird. There are more enemies to kill. We will continue to play a little bit just because we want to kill everyone. But yeah, 
we have uh, failed the mission. This is not too easy. So I don't know what to do with those people. Come here. Come on.
Yeah, it will be a fun game to play with a friend. Relative. Rayma didn't know about this game being uh, made by the same people that made Game Spawn and Time Splitters 2. Game Spawn Goldeneye for the Nintendo 64. Had I known that, I would have uh, bought this game for sure. I love the Goldeneye game, and this is essentially an improved version of it. But I never played the story mode much, so I probably wouldn't play this story mode a lot. Unless, of course, a friend or my sister. It's fun when it can be two players. I believe Time Splitters 2 had a multiplayer co-op as well, so I played it a lot with my sister. Yeah, so yeah, if you can play single player uh, or single player missions with a friend, then I would probably be more inclined to play it than uh, play alone. But uh, that's why I mostly play the multiplayer and not single player in, in game spawned and such, but in this game we have an ally computer player instead. And we do not have a player as an ally. In game spawned I believe that we couldn't play uh, with a friend even if we had one available. Essentially they were just single player missions. And it's more fun when they are not single player. Now we have gotten stuck. I found the pass last time I played this game, like an hour or so ago, I found a pass to an area where there were a lot of arm armored enemies. I can also move uh, the sofa. Yeah, there are some physics, cool. I can move the sofa all the way, like this, that's cool. Here. I can't kill our ally, we have no friendly fire. I'm bored of this area. I don't believe we're supposed to go there. This is perfect dark. Highly recommend the PC port of the game. It's also the Nintendo 64 version of course. Ah, here's the the like uh, elevator. That's how we went to the other area. Of course we can't win this uh, mission now. And we have essentially failed by killing those women. But uh, yeah, we will have some more fights. I expect they will kill our ally soon. He's not very good at staying alive. Good job. We need to help a bit. He's not killed. Up some ammo. 
last playthrough she was killed in the elevator over there. I didn't see her die. Laboratory lift. Nice. We're supposed to go here. Right, I need to click on that screen to shut the door. Oh no, I need to click here probably. Kills 33, accuracy 34.9%. Yeah, it didn't go too well. It's easier to hit the enemy with the pistol than with the machine gun. <laughs> I did a better job uh, in the previous attempt that failed to record. Uh, shot total. So, uh, 249 shots. 7 headshots. 39 body shots. Limb shots at two other zero. Okay, and uh, we can decline. Same mission again. That's the main character. I don't really like her look. Uh, the blonde uh, allied character looks better. But anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.